All right, welcome back to Take 5. You know, in light of the City Council, the Seattle City Council passing that head tax, a lot of you have been wanting to have more information about how much money we're spending on homelessness and are we distributing resources in the best way? Yeah, this is, uh, this is a super interesting article we're going to talk about. Uh, Emily and her team have been working on this for six months. It's a compelling read, and it's kind of staggering to discover that the Puget Sound region spends $1.6 billion a year trying to deal with this homeless crisis. Yeah. It's 1.06. And, uh, and, yes. and you know what? Let me set this up. You're the editor in chief of the Puget Sound Business Journal, right? I am. Okay. I am. And thank you for, for having me today. We have spent an enormous amount of time. And what we really set out to do was to, to try and quantify how much as a region are we spending per year. And that's yeah. a per year number. And I think that that's really important to emphasize. And that wasn't just, you know, the cities and the county. That's also all of the nonprofits and all of the groups in this region that are dedicated to working on this issue. So everybody should have a house for 1.06 billion every yeah. year. But right. you say the problem, I know you had a great quote on that. Or well, you got right there in the article, right at the top, you talk about that it's, it's not a resource problem. The mm -hmm. experts are saying that this is a communication problem. Like the money's there, we're just not doing the right thing. I think, you know, when you, when you really boil it down, there, there's, this is a complicated issue. Um, but there are a couple of pieces that it would be um, relatively easy to address. First off, we have 125 or so nonprofits working on this simultaneously. Right. Let's slow down. 125 organizations in this region working yes. on homelessness. Yes. Okay, I'll let you keep going. Go ahead. Exactly. <laughs> and, and so as a result, there's, there's serious communication problems there. I mean, just trying to get two organizations to talk to each other is bad enough. But then you also have to consider the various municipalities that are also we're trying to work on this problem and communicate with those organizations. It just becomes a bit of a nightmare. And I think that that has really contributed to the, the increase in spending with, you know, as we look around, there's still an enormous problem and there's still a lot of people not being served because mm -hmm. they're falling through the cracks. And I think that better organization in that regard would help, um, you know, address some of the some of the challenges that they're facing. And I want to emphasize just some of them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because you talk about mental health in this mm -hmm. and how that's such a big component of the problem. And yet we're not putting the resources there. We're really not, and you know, one of the things that we that we pointed out is that it costs about four times more to care for somebody, especially somebody with mental health issues, who's living on the street, than it would if that person had a home to begin with. So if you start with homes, you know, and then get those folks into homes, it's much easier to care for their mental health challenges. If you think about it, it makes sense. Delivering medications are, is much easier when somebody has a fixed address, and so that yeah. that is one of the the major things. And I know that the city and the county is really focused on this housing first mentality and trying to sort of align everything that they're doing with that concept. And you hear a lot about affordable housing, certainly with the head tax issue, you hear the mayor saying, yes, we got to focus on the affordable housing. There's a lot of ambiguity in what exactly that means. You feature somebody in the article, a uh, Ballard native, Marty, who uh, basically says, I've been on a waiting list for five years. And that's another enormous challenge. You know, yeah. some of these folks will bounce around from area to area too, and they're they're waiting on these incredibly long lists for for services and in some cases affordable housing, and it's just not affordable to them. Some of these these reduced rate um, apartments that have come online, they're still not affordable to right. to these folks, and so you need yeah. that real entry level point. And I think that's what, as a community, we're struggling to produce. Before you go, I would love it if you would share. You know, as journalists, we often go into these stories, and this is a six month project. Yeah. But you go into these stories, and you think this is what I'm going to find, and then you're six months in. Did it validate what you were thinking, or did it change what you were thinking when you went into it? Well, I think when we went into it, we were thinking, we're going to be able to quantify this. We're really going to be able to come up with a number that we feel is really accurate. And what we found is we're, we think we underestimated this by a, a large amount um, because we were not able to get the information that we needed. And that's because a lot of the, the municipalities, the city, and the, the county, they don't track this. So they don't even know how much they are spending on homelessness. Yeah. And so if they don't even know, right. we can't really put a true price tag. So mm. we were going off of estimates and um, doing some math, basically, to figure out how much is the police department spending? How right. much are we spending on emergency services? And, and kind of extrapolating from there to try and come up with this number. And we were very conservative yeah. in our estimations. And we, we, oh, yeah, we got to give all credit to Puget Sound Business yes. Journal. You guys done a wonderful job on this. It's a great read. If you haven't, go read it because it gives you a lot of context as to the issue mm. and what people are really dealing with yes. uh, in the county and beyond. So thank you. We're going to actually post it in the Five Eye, we are told. So Fantastic. our viewers can go jump on there. Thanks for joining us. Yeah, there. Emily, appreciate it. it. Thank you. Yeah.